State Attorneys General. And yes, that is the correct plural, and if you already knew that, I'm sorry that high school was such a rough time for you. <laughs> Believe me, I know, being a teenage grammar nerd is something <laughs> from which it is difficult to recover. <laughs> and look, I do realise that a show about state AGs sounds like a tedious prospect. Just watch the start of this 2006 panel discussion on C-SPAN in front of an electrified crowd. Our panel today features three uh, distinguished uh, <laughs> and very different and bipartisan uh, attorneys general. Look, I've got to say, that was a bit of a dick move by the C-SPAN cameraman there. <laughs> he didn't have to pan across those empty seats, but he did it anyway, as if to say, look, even the panel's friends didn't show up. <laughs> And I'll tell you what that panel did wrong, actually. If you want a live audience to listen to you talk about state AGs, simply don't tell them in advance. We filmed this show in front of a live audience. You think we told them what this show's about? <laughs> of course not. They were explicitly told that this was a taping of The Rachel Ray Show. And I promise <laughs> she'll be out any minute now. <laughs> but look, it is worth the effort to learn about state AGs because they are very important, and yet most of us probably don't know who ours is. Although, if you live in Indiana, I am very excited to introduce you to yours. Please meet Curtis Hill, AG by day, although by night, something very much different. I was toying around with it and discovered that I sounded sort of like Elvis. We're caught in a trap. I can't walk out. <laughs> Because I love you too much, baby. We saw the Attorney General do all the hits. Say, only fools, only fools rush in. I don't know if you've noticed, but I don't look much like Elvis. <laughs> I hadn't, to be honest, I hadn't noticed that. Frankly, it's difficult to notice anything besides the most sadistic inseam in the history of tailoring. <laughs> that looks like a marshmallow bisected with fishing wire. And that's all it looks like. Most state AGs are actually elected, meaning they belong to political parties and they run campaign ads, like this striking one from Michigan. When you're choosing Michigan's next attorney general, ask yourself this. Who can you trust most not to show you their penis in a professional setting? Is it the candidate who doesn't have a penis? I'd say so. Well, that is certainly an argument. Although, to be honest, if you were asking me which candidate I trust most not to show me their penis, I'd have to go with Dickless Dennis. He, he can't show me his penis. Why? That mean old raccoon still has it. <laughs> that, that, that woman is running for Attorney General in Michigan. It's one of 30 states where voters will be selecting their next AG on November 6th. And those elections are going to be unusually competitive. Some estimate that more than $100 million will be spent on AG races this year. That's up to three times more than ever before. So tonight, let's look at who AGs are, what they do, and why they matter. And let's start with what they do, because typically they serve as a state's chief legal officer and the people's lawyer, with responsibilities ranging from uh, criminal law enforcement to consumer advocacy to, and everything in between. The landmark multi-billion dollar uh, tobacco industry settlement in the 90s, the one that killed Joe Camel, that was thanks to state AGs. Uh, this year's blockbuster report on abuses by the Catholic Church in Pennsylvania, that was thanks to a state AG. You know who put out that raging wildfire in Northern California? That was firefighters. Use your head. <laughs> Why would state AGs...